Good morning. This is the Subarctic Beekeeper, one of the many. It is March 22nd. Temperature is 13 below zero. Happy spring, everybody. My bees are still in the bee barn. In a temperature controlled environment, it's about 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Humidity is a bit low. It's running in the 30s. It would be great if it was more equal to 40. This is the time of year that I get anxious, one of them, about the bees. There have been no cleansing flights since October, and we're at the home stretch now, but it's still not warm enough for them to be out flying around. They die. And since they've been hived up for so long, one of the first things they want to do is they want to fly out and defecate. That would be what would be necessary for them to stay alive. The risk is that they do that in the bee barn and they fly out and die. I don't want that to happen. So this year, I built a bee pod on my deck. If you heard the podcast from last year, I brought my hives out towards the end of March, put them on the deck where it's full sun, and it worked well. Insulated them up a little more, wrapped them up, etc., protect them from the elements. It was stressful for them because we had real cold nights and then we had warm days, but they made it through for the most part. It was a pain in the butt. So this bee pod is what I guess you would call it a deck storage box. I looked some things up and I found a video on YouTube by a guy who I think he calls himself I like to make stuff and looked at his instructions and modified them for what I needed and it worked out just fine. It's just about done. So what this box is going to do is it's almost going to be like a mini bee barn. I've got it on the deck facing south so it's, it's getting full sun. It's made out of wood. It's 12 feet long, 3 feet high and 3 feet wide. The top opens so that I can get to the top of the hives for adding syrup and adding pollen patties. The front of it opens downward and I put several panels on the front so that they don't all have to be open at the same time. It opens downward because that way the bees can get out during the day and they can fly around and then get back in. I can shut it up when it, the temperature drops. Right now the temperature is getting at its peak around 4 p.m. We've got 12 hours of daylight because it's equinox and around 4 p.m. we're getting temperatures between I'd say about 30 degrees Fahrenheit to a high of 40 degrees Fahrenheit where the bees can get out and they can do a cleansing flight and that's what's most important. This brings me to the topic of thermodynamics and thermoregulation. And I don't think enough people know about this, and I think it would help with wintering. So I'm going to go over some stuff, and it'll explain how I built my bee barn and my bee pod, and it'll explain what needs to be done in order for your hives to survive with cold temperatures. Thermodynamics is a branch of physics, and it deals with heat, temperature, and their relation to energy, their ability to transfer energy and heat, absorb heat, etc. I'm doing a very simplified version of this. Thermoregulation is the ability of an organism to keep its body temperature within certain boundaries despite the surrounding temperature. We know that bees don't warm the inside of a hive in the winter, but they keep the queen warm and they do that by shivering their bodies. Bees can thermoregulate. We can thermoregulate. We can keep our temperature at 98.7 or 98.6, whatever, even if it's cold outside or if it's warm outside. However, under certain circumstances, particularly in the cold, we have to add something for us to stay warm. So in our climate, we are always adding layers, and we add certain layers to help the heat energy we give off from our body. We wear layers to absorb moisture and get that moisture off our body so it doesn't freeze. We wear an outer shell for protection from the wind and the elements. And the more layers we have, the better the heat retention. So when you're up here in the subarctic, you don't typically just go out with a t-shirt and sweater on, although some of us do. If you want to really be prepared for the long term, say you're going on a hike or something, you're going to bring several layers. So some important things to know. R-Value, one of my favorite products is R-Tech, and it's foam insulation board. It has a good R-Value. The only thing that R-Value represents is the ability of that material to resist temperature changes. So R stands for resistance. So R-Value is resistance value. So what R-Tech does, foam board insulation does, doesn't absorb heat, it doesn't bring in heat, but when you use it as a barrier between inside and outside, it makes sure that the inside temperature stays warm and the outside temperature doesn't impact that inside temperature. Another important thing is heat transfer. And this is the transfer of energy, but we're gonna talk about heat. The transfer of heat between objects. So the thicker the material, the better the ability to transfer heat. When we're talking about heat transfer, we'd be talking about bees in the hive are generating a warmth by shivering. When we've got full frames of honey or full frames of stores, they can absorb some of that heat. There's three types of heat transfer, conduction, convection, and thermal mass. Conduction is when the heat transfer happens through solids. Convection is when warm air comes off of something like the cluster, rises up and causes cold air to go down. If you've ever been in a, a house and it's been cold outside and you open the door, if you look up, you'll see the warm, moist energy leave from the top of the door and you'll see cold come in the bottom. And it comes in typically like a fog. So heat capacity is the amount of heat needed to raise the temperature of something by one degree. 
So that's how hard do the bees have to work in order to warm up that cluster by one degree. Thermal mass is the ability of the material to absorb, store, and then release heat. That's one of the things that I'm most concerned about. We need to have things inside the hive that absorb the heat that the bees release, store it, and then release it back to the cluster. So right now, with my empty frames inside the hives and the colonies being smaller, there's less thermal mass in there. So things with good thermal mass. So remember, thermal mass is the ability to absorb, store, and release heat. Materials with good thermal mass. Concrete, can't use that. Beeswax has a thermal mass of 0.82. Brick, 0.22. Cork, 0.45. Fiberboard, 0.6. Polystyrene, 0.54. Pine wood, 0.6. Oak wood, 0.48. And wool is 0.41. This information was gathered from a ton of different resources on the internet. Okay, so the higher the number, the better. So the materials that we can take advantage of here are beeswax, Full frames stores contain a lot of beeswax. Cork, because bees won't chew through cork, and it's lightweight. Polystyrene, so it has the ability to absorb, store, and reflect heat back to the colony. And wool. Wool I learned about when I was in Scotland. I visited a beekeeper there named Anne Chilcott. She lives north of Inverness, which is in the highlands of Scotland. She showed me her hives, and we talked about wintering, and she showed me a wild living hive. It was a wonderful day. And one of the things she uses for insulation in her hives is wool, which I thought was interesting, because some of us use moisture quilts in the top of our hives to absorb moisture, and we use burlap bags with wood shavings, because wood absorbs water. A friend of mine in Canada used some cotton, which I didn't think was a great idea because cotton absorbs moisture, but it releases the moisture as well. And uses wool. I didn't know what to do with that, but I'll get back to that. So when we're looking at wintering our hives, we have to think about all these pieces of thermodynamics that allow the bees to thermoregulate. Because when the thermoregulation of the bees stops, they die. When they're no longer able to keep their temperature at the temperature it needs to be, they die. Up here in the far north where we have temperatures that are 35, 45, 55 degrees below zero Fahrenheit, we have to be thinking about this stuff. So on the topic of hives, polystyrene hive or wood hive? Well, a polystyrene hive has a thermal mass of 0.54, but a wood hive, typically made of pine, has a thermal mass of 0.6. However, a polystyrene hive has an R value somewhere around six to eight, and a wood hive has an R value of one, which means even though the wood might be able to absorb that heat and does not help to keep the inside temperature of the hive from cooling when the ambient temperature outside the hive is cold, whereas the polystyrene hive does. So when you are using a wooden traditional Langstroth hive, you are not getting a whole lot of thermal mass. You could get better thermal mass from having a paraffin wax hive, which has a thermal mass of 0.7. If you're living in the south, you can get away with a wood hive. Up here, you're gonna have to use a ton of insulation and a lot of berries on the outside with a high R value. I hope it's helpful. That's all for today. Take care of yourself. Take care of your bees. This podcast is copyrighted and all rights reserved.